be it through water conservation techniques, cover cropping with jack beans and researching on fertilizers formulas. The Uganda Youth at Risk Development Network UDNET, is constantly finding new ways of battling climate change, coupling this with the promotion of indigenous farming techniques as founder Kawiya Samuel explained. When we partnered with various organizations like AXA, we gained invaluable expertise and as a result awakened our activities. We have various programs like farmer trainings in which we practice advocacy in matters shared in the partner organizations, helping farmers identify genuine seeds, promoting indigenous farming methods, and identifying for farmers the ideal time to run particular activities. In this way, we we'll link the grassroots farmer with the partners that can foster their growth. <laughs> Immaculate Chuankov Chikuve Village, Najembe Division, speaks of her experience in the time she has spent with the organization. The time I've spent in Udinet has greatly benefited my life. In battling climate change while feeding my animals, I have made great progress. As they prefer maize brand, I have planted a great deal of maize and grasses along my contours, which to supplement their feeding. Wherever there is a farmer's workshop, it will be ideal to participate, because as people in the village, farming is our main route to prosperity. On my part, I have quite a number of trees like avocado, which I have had the added advantage of providing a source of income. I have bananas as well, which I sell once in a while when I have surplus. By implementing integration and intercropping, she has effected planting coffee alongside bananas and other foodstuffs just as Immaculate Simon Sentongo, also of Chikube Village, shares his ordeal. Droughts come very abruptly. I discovered that as I grow various crops like passion fruit, cabbage and tomatoes, they all need water. This led me to saving up and purchasing this overhead irrigation sprinkler. We have market for our produce, much as the price is not one we desire. It has not all been rosy for Simon though. The jewel for his farm was once a passion fruit plantation that spanned three acres. However, today it is a mere quarter of an acre due to a virus attack and poor chemicals. He does not mean his words for those in authority. I implore the government and their cultural authorities to generally scrutinize the companies they grant tenders to supply farm inputs in the country, as most times they fall victim to poor quality and expired chemicals. This setback, however, has not robbed him of his joy. He is able to carry forward his fish farming, which he integrates with yams in the swamps of his land. Udinet has also run poultry programs through some of its farmers and Razia Nagai is one of the earliest beneficiaries. We were first given poultry pots in our group as the old chicks. These we reared collectively and the second generation was given to individual farmers. We got five birds each, four females and a call. These we reared until they laid eggs, which we let hatch, increasing our fold. There was a criteria followed in awarding the poultry, and I was the second on the list. In the same group as Razia is Hawa Namakula. We received 250 birds with 25 people in our group. We got them as the old chicks and reared them for two months. At that point, we each got five birds, and the prerequisite was that one had to construct a poultry house. That is why I built this one for my birds. Hawa, in a bid to cut costs, employed the indigenous way of constructing building a raided mud and water house as she prepares for her journey into successful poultry rearing.
these small contributions in the different communities go a long way in improving the people's lifestyle.